Hi, it's Modius Silva here for Madrega and our new project, The Character of Change. I'd like to talk about Elul, since we're in the month of Elul right now. Elul is our time to wake up. We know that the shofar that we listen to each morning now leading up to the high holidays has a penetrating, piercing sound, and it's designed to symbolically wake us up, wake us up from the slumber of the summer, wake us up to look back and reflect on everything that we've done this past year and set plans for a good future in the coming year. Our day of judgment is only a few days away. I'd like to share with you some thoughts about the shofar and this idea of penetrating, piercing sounds designed to wake us up. Rabbi Gamliel Rabinovich, who's the head of a yeshiva in Jerusalem and an expert on halacha, Jewish law, and Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, expounds on this idea in a book called Tiv HaMoadim. He says that this time period that we're in now is like a lion roaring to scare us into this, to this point of trembling. In Hebrew, a lion is an aryeh, aleph, resh, yud, he. And he says that the aryeh, the lion that roars to wake us up, is aleph for Elul, resh for Rosh Hashanah. Yud for Yom Kippur, and He for Hoshana Rabbah, which is the last day that we actually have to repent before the gates are closed fully for the year. So this time period itself is designed to roar to wake us up. In the Musa tradition, we have a story from Or Yisrael, the collected writings of Reb Yisrael Salanta, the founder of the modern-day Musa movement. And in letter 14, he talks about how his stu- one of his students, Reb Yitzchak Belezer, would get up on the bima, get up on, in, the, in the shul in Jerusalem, on Shabbos Mevorchim, on the Shabbat before the month of Elul. And he would call out that the month of Elul was about to begin. And everyone in the shul would shake, shake from fear, shake, tremble from the awesomeness of the month that was upon them. If only we could have that inner roar of our own lion, perhaps triggered by an external roar of the lion of Elul and Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Hoshana Rabbah, we would shake to the point where we could go deeper this year than we've ever gone and make changes for the coming year in a way that we've never been able to do before. Today in North America, how afraid are we of the judgment that we sometimes could face? When we see in our secular system someone can commit murder, go to jail and be out in a couple of years, when we look at those secular examples then when we think about ourselves, how afraid could we possibly be of our own actions? I spoke harshly today. I wasn't so nice to this person. It's like it's hardly anything close, thank God, to something like murder. And yet, I'm supposed to generate that level of trembling that I would have. So how much fear should we have? It's a good intellectual question, but but it, it may not be so useful. Imagine you're in a jungle and a lion jumps out in front of you on your path, are you going to stop in in your tracks, in the lion's tracks, and say, just one second, how much fear should I have at this moment? It's not going to happen. Just put yourself in the path. Put yourself right there in the moment. And don't think so much about how much fear should you have. Just touch what's going on in your heart, in your body, Think about the actions that you've made over the last year and then go down deep and see how you feel about those. And don't measure them and don't limit yourself. So with that, in this month of Elul, according to our Musa Rebis, our Musa Musa Masters, we should choose something very small to correct. Nothing too, too big because we don't want to set ourselves up for failure. Something we want to succeed at. Start with a mistake maybe you've made in the last week. Maybe you spoke too harshly to someone. And now, think about that thing and take it back to its root. Why was it that you spoke harshly to that person? Maybe you were too busy, too rushed. 
maybe there's something a bit deeper, chances are if you think about a handful of little things that you've done wrong in the last while and trace them back to their roots, you'll only come up with two or three key roots. That's what you need to do this month of Elul, is look for at least one of those key roots that then, tr then um, cascade out and cause all sorts of problems for you and your life. And now, make a small change. So, for example, our family is too busy generally to sit down together for a meal, except for Shabbat. So we sit down for Shabbat, and the rest of the week we grab food as we can, or one person will eat and then another person, and so on. So this month of Elul, instead of saying every single day of Elul, we're going to sit down as a family together, it'll be useful to just say, I'll pick one time, one meal time outside of Shabbat for this month that we're going to sit down together as a family. We love each other. We want to deepen our relationships with each other, and we know that spending time together and communicating is a great way to do that, and yet we don't tend to do it. So rather than focus on big results, rather than focus on big projects, just this month, pick something very small that you want to do as a step towards progress. As a last thought, it may also help to do something like counting down to Rosh Hashanah. Right now, we might still have two, three weeks left, and it's like, oh, I've got lots of time to figure this out, to work my way towards Rosh Hashanah. And as time gets closer and closer, maybe your level of fear, that, that uh, the roar of the lion, or the result of the roar of an external lion, might make you wake up and realize that you actually don't have that much time. The uh, Mashkiach of the Mir Yeshiva, the Musar Rebbe of the Mir Yeshiva, when it was set up in Shanghai during the Second World War, was Rebbe Yitzchak Levenstein. And he used to count down the days to Rosh Hashanah through the month of Elul, much like we count towards Shavuot from Pesach, counting the Omer. And for him, it helped him sharpen his attention and sharpen his intention to do the work starting immediately and not leave it to the last moment. So the time is now. Let's make use of this month, Elul, to set a path for our own greatness this coming year. And we, may we all merit to be written in the Book of Life.